This video focuses on a particular example of the t-confidence interval for the population mean. It's an example that was drawn from a doctoral dissertation that I actually supervised with a local school district. Here's the problem. A school district uses reading recovery, which is a, a, a computer-based program, to remediate low-performing readers to help them improve. The data are, can, are contained in the file readingassessment.xlsx, an Excel file, and I will post it in the data folder in the uh, in the course uh, the course site. In, in the event that you want to follow along or recreate what I've done, uh, and uh, these data represent independent reading scores at three points in time. There is a score of these students' pro uh, progress. It's a, I think MAP scores is the test I used before using reading recovery after 10 weeks of using reading recovery because there's, it's a 10-week program and then at the end of the school year okay, to see if they've retained it. Um, so with this one what we're going to do is we're going to look at the growth. The growth from beginning to the end of 10 weeks um, which is uh, basically um, the exit uh, exit score minus their entry score um, or we could look at other growth scores but we're just going to look at that one from from when they start to when they end the program 10 weeks later. With 95% confidence, estimate the mean growth the mean growth of all students in this district using, using the reading recovery program. Okay, so let's take a look at the data. Um, and I'm going to go to uh, a, the data itself. Here it is. Notice we have the entry level reading recovery after 10 weeks and so forth. These are the students uh, standardized test scores, MAP scores. Uh, we want to estimate with 95 percent confidence the mean growth mean growth for all students in this district okay based upon this sample of students. Uh, that's, that would be this column over here reading recovery growth. Um, now the uh, going back to the uh, okay since it's a confidence interval. We need some information. It is a Z interval or a T interval because we do not have the standard deviation of the of the growth scores for all students in the district but we have the standard deviation of growth scores for a sample of 537 students in the district. Um, let me go get my pen and here it is. Notice what we need is a few things with the T interval. Again, give me the formula. We need the sample mean, the mean of the of the the mean growth for the sample, a t confidence value, and the and then we have the standard deviation of the sample and the sample size. All right, so um, I actually went to the site, went to StatCrunch. You can get this information. Let me show you how under Stat, and it is under Summary Statistics on a particular column. It is reading. Uh, reading recovery growth there it is compute click it and it looks like this and that's what you have on the PowerPoint I go back to the PowerPoint now okay so we have the sample mean here's the table that I just I just created from StatCrunch n is 537 uh, that's a little bit problematic as you'll see in a few minutes sample mean the samples, so what, what StatCrunch gives you is actually the sample standard deviation. So this value right here, the standard deviation is your S, all right? That is your sample standard deviation. The, with a sample of 537, the degrees of freedom is 537 minus 1 or 536 degrees of freedom. If you actually go to the T confidence table, I'm going to go there right now. So uh, let me pull it up for you. And uh, so the T confidence table, there it is. Notice, I'm going to scroll down. Notice that the great biggest degrees of freedom it has is 70. Anything over 70, what you want to use is you just want to use the biggest values you have available. For 95%, and confidence and more anything more than 70 degrees of freedom use 1.994 so many standard deviations you need to go up and down to capture 95 percent of the data okay so let's go back to the powerpoint uh, plugging the values in 
um, we have the sample mean minus 1.994 and one, 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 remember 1.994 1 is your T confidence value in that formula so you get that from the T confidence table when you plug the values in you get a bottom limit of 11.407 and a top limit of 11.973 so that's the growth score in MAP score from when they started the program to when they ended the program oh, between about 11 and a half point growth on average for all students so what we need to do is is again interpret the intervals we do with all confidence intervals so from the calculations of the upper and lower limits are 11.407 and and 11.973 so we are 95% confident that the mean reading growth score of all students in the district that use reading recovery, not just this year, but next year and the year after and so forth, for this period of 10 weeks, is between 11.407 and 11.973 points. Um, as we do with the Z interval, the validity. Okay, so the validity is based on, again, the T distribution since... We do not know the standard deviation of the population, so our X bars follow a T. The number of students selected is 537, so much greater than 30. The standard deviation of reading growth scores for all students is unknown. We do know the standard deviation for this sample of students, but not for all students. But the problem itself um, did not give any information about how the sample of students was selected. In particular, we were not given that the students were randomly selected to reading recovery. Okay, or we did not randomly select reading recovery students, I should say. So, since the randomness of the sample is unknown, the validity of the confidence interval is unknown. All right, just a few little things I want to share with you, just a little, we could call this trivia. I want to show you really quickly how you can actually check your answers on StatCrunch. So under StatCrunch, if you go to T sample, and let me move it over so you can see a little bit better. You go to T statistics, we have one sample, okay, and we have the data. So we want to examine the, pick the data, reading recovery, this is exit minus when they started. So when they ended the program after 10 weeks, when they started reading recovery growth. We want to construct a confidence interval. So you select confidence interval and compute. And notice what you get is you get essentially an, a lower limit and an upper limit of your T confidence value. Notice this might, ver this might differ slightly from what you calculate by hand. The only reason for that is that um, StatCrunch uses things to the to seven and eight decimal places. Um, and that's why you might be off by a hundredth or a, a thousandth from what StatCrunch calculates. But it'll give you a pretty good sense that you're, you're close. All right. So let's go back to the... Uh, um, the problem that's how you can check your work with StatCrunch. Lastly, one other little bit of trivia, and this this doesn't come up in this problem because we had a sample of over 500. So, um, but occasionally, what you'll find is that the sample is less than 30. Now, if you have generally, you'd say, "Well, I can't do it; it's not valid." But I'm going to show you what you, what I'd like you to start doing because when you have samples that are less than 30, which is often the case, I mean you. Uh, if you're collecting data on a class, you can't say, well, I demand 35 students in this class. You might only have 24. So you get what you get, <laughs> as they say. Um, so what do you do if, say, the sample is less than 30? Well, remember, for validity condition 2, there's two ways to satisfy it. Either the sample is bigger than 30, or the population is normal. So we generally don't have the population. So how, and especially if you've got a small sample size, how would we essentially guess what the population looks like? The way you do that, and I'm going to go back to StatCrunch, is actually look at a histogram of the data that you're interested in. So 
the data that we are interested in is uh, the reading recovery growth scores, and that would be exit minus entry right here. If I get a graph of those via histogram, so a histogram of reading recovery growth scores, and compute, it looks something like that. Now, this is, we have 530 students, we don't need to worry about this, but if we only had 20 to 30, we would look at the graph of the data. And what does that suggest? This is a graph of the sample of growth scores. It suggests, I can't draw on it because it's not on PowerPoint, but what it suggests is that the growth scores for all students is normal. The, the graph of the growth scores for the sample, the histogram, appears normal. It's not going to be exactly, so it's a new word I'll introduce to you. It's normalish. Okay, normalish means it looks pretty normal to me. So this is a, a histogram. I've copied it from StatCrunch. So here would be my conclusion. I'm again, it's not relevant here, but if you only had a sample of 24, 25, look at the sample histogram, and here's your conclusion. The distribution of the growth scores for the sample of 537 students appears to be normal. Okay, it's normalish. So what does that suggest? That suggests that the growth scores for all students or the population is normal. So if this histogram appears relatively normal, it doesn't have to be perfect, but normalish. Then, again, then it looks like I would. It suggests at least that we have satisfied condition two because it suggests that our population is normal.